Can you hear the music in the game? Yeah. Pro okay, cool. Piano, right? Yeah. Are you ready for me to read? Yeah. yeah. But the boy himself was having difficulty comprehending the things going through his heart. Emotionally, he was horribly unstable, like a ship without a sail. Still, every time he spotted the white-haired girl, his heart would leap and his whole body jitter with anxiety and excitement. He had never felt anything like this before, and as such as he struggled to keep these strange emotions in check. Whenever he saw an opportunity, Mel would speak to the white-haired girl. In days he was unable to, he either spent in secluded silence or distracted days. Love is a curious thing. It has the power to change those who experience it. When he did manage to approach her, he tripped over his tongue. Again and again, he talked to her, and again and again, he stumbled. I imagine if Bro's he not the rich lord. <laughs> to see a romance <laughs> leader in his present state, he would cry just as much as little Nelly. We cry at tragedies because we draw parallels with our own lives. At least that is what I think. Great tales of romance attain true gravity with the audience only when they are personally familiar with them. Why is the maid saying this? Crazy. What? Crazy. What do you mean? In any event, in any case, the white-haired girl was, as a result of this, visibly perturbed. She was delighted that he, that he was being so kind to her, but confusion overpowered every other emotion. She appeared to be at a loss for what, it, what to do as he clumsily catapulted words and stares at her. The male did not back down, though he probably knew not what caused such fiery emotion to erupt within his breast. One's first love, in particular, tends to burn like a wildfire. Wildfire. Wildfowl. Wildfowl. Can't speak. <laughs> Are you familiar with the sensation, Master? Oh? He 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 he. <laughs> ah. There she is. She's not even looking. Is she cleaning? No, it looks like she's reading. It's now or never. Uh oh. Oh. Griffith? Shut up. <laughs> Boo. Ah, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Lord Mel, you were very, you were very clearly meant to scare you, because you just wouldn't notice me. What are you reading? You look pretty engrossed. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I should have asked for permission. No, it's fine, no need to apologize. Feel free to read whatever you want, and you're welcome to go back to your room if you'd like to spend more time with them. Um, but I was just, I was just amazed that the mansion had a library. There must have been a lot of work to collect all these books. There are some pretty old books here in, your, in here, too. Grandfathers? So many collected, and some even older than that. Take a look at this. I think it's a diary, but it's not from, but it's not from this country. Or the century, for that matter. Maybe a feudal lord? Haha, <laughs> here. He's complaining about the quality of the harvest. Can this forsaken land only produce over sour grapes? Ah, if only the largest of the, uh, Barney? Or maybe Barnier? He only has a level 5 harvest. <laughs> the largest of the Barnier estates reminds that the land there is much more suitable to cultivation. There you have it. You can read this, Lord, Lord Mel? More or less. I looked over it several times already, so that wasn't too difficult. Why would such an old book be here? I'm not sure. It, and all of this, was already here when I moved into the mansion. Have you not lived here your whole life? I was born at our estate, but to me and Nelly, this is more like our home. We moved when I was still young, and we've lived here ever since. Nellie and Mother have both grown quite fond of it. Father, though, often goes back to the house because he doesn't like all the roses. By himself? Yeah, well, sometimes Mother goes with him. But for the most part, he goes alone. Don't get me wrong. It's not because they don't get along. In fact, they act more like teenagers in love than, than grown adults. That's a good thing. It almost makes me sick having to watch it. <laughs> Why is that a good thing? Well, you know, like... It's, it's, it means they actually it's, like each other. Yeah, it means they're still obsessed yeah. with each other, which is good. Yeah. Is Hopefully... No. Huh? No, uh, no, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I, I, said, I was going to say it's kind of ironic that Mel's saying that even though he's a teenager in love, you know? Being awkward. Yeah. Trying to riz up the white hair girl. And then he and, 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 and yeah, the and then he's all like, "Oh, my parents are so cringe, trying to raising each other up all the time, you know." Yeah. No self awareness at all. Yeah. True, but still, there are those in this world who will not be with the ones they care for as much as they may wish. Uh oh. Uh oh. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm sorry about that. Uh, oh, that's right. The book. What were you reading? I um, wasn't exactly reading. I can't. I do not enjoy reading lots of text. I was looking at the pictures. Is that so? You seem very cultured. So I thought you'd be partial to reading. Perhaps you're actually more like Nelly. I'm sure you your studies. Um, I. Yes. Aha, I wouldn't have guessed. Like She's reading the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar. I do. What else do you like? What? What do you enjoy doing? It could be anything. I enjoy being told stories. Stories? Yes, when I was young, my father would tell me tales. What kind of stories did you like? Um, there was one about an imprisoned girl. Tell it to me. Here's my life story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once there was a girl and she was locked away in a mansion deep in the forest. A mansion with only one window. But the window sat high upon the wall, far beyond her reach. So it was always very dark inside, unlike this mansion. However, the girl did not like the outside world. There were lots of scary things out there, after all. Though she may have been all alone in the mansion, she grew comfortable with the darkness and time, so she had nothing to be afraid of. Then... Um, am I doing a good job? You're doing fine. Keep going. What happens next? Okay. And then the girl grew up. By then she had already forgotten why she was locked up, but she was content with the darkness. However, her eyes couldn't help but be drawn to the little bit of light that spilled through the one window. Though she was comfortable in the darkness, the sight of the light made her heart race. At first the girl thought it was because she found it unpleasant, because she disliked the light and the outside. Slowly she came to realize that she was curious about the outside world. What could be happening out there? For all she knew, the town, the forest, the people, all of it could have changed while she was imprisoned in the mansion. But she had no way of finding out. So the girl decided to write letters and throw them out the window. What began as empty grasping became routine, continuing for several months until she was finally ready to give up. And then a beautiful white dove flew in through the window. Tied to the dove's leg was a letter. Her height racing, she read the words contained within. It seemed to have been written by a man. The letter contained numerous questions for the girl. It also said that if she atta attached a reply to the dove, it would bring the letter back to her. She was astonished, but she wrote him back anyway, taking care not to mention where she was. After having exchanged letters a number of times, the two felt very close to one another, as though they had known each other for many years, despite having never met. And eventually the man said he wanted to meet her? Indeed. The girl was unsure what to do. Should she tell him of how she lived? Should she reveal where she spent her days? She was afraid if she did, he would cease to send her letters. She was sure he believed her to be a young lady of noble blood, not a girl locked away in a house deep in the forest. The girl could not bring herself herself the right response. She released the dove through the window with nothing attached to its leg, and yet it returned with another letter, written in the man's familiar hand. You must surely have a grave reason for your silence, it said. I would like to know that reason, I would like to help you, no matter what it may be, if you have my word. She deliberated. Though his letters were kind, she did not know this man. He was from the outside. Would, she still treat, would he still treat her the same way as when he met her? And did she even want to step out into the world beyond? What do you think she did? Wrote a letter and agreed to meet him, right? Yes, she did. The girl made up her mind she would write a letter. As always, when she tied it to the dove's leg, it flew off out the window. And for some time after that, she received no response from the man. This saddened her, but she thought it was for the best. She belonged in her own confined world, her own world in darkness. But then one day, light shone into the mansion. I like that dove picture, it's kind of cute. Yeah. The sealed door had been opened, and the doorway stood a handsome young man. I have come for you, he said. The man was a prince from a neighboring kingdom. When the girl stepped outside, before her sat a, a magnificent carriage, the likes of which she had never before seen, accompanied, accompanied by many servants. The prince, kind as in the letters, swore his love to her. And the two lived happily ever after. Mm. Wow. Ah, what a nice story. I'm glad it had a happy ending. Huh, a prince. Uh, I can be that, that for you. funny about the story? No, no, that's not why I was laughing. Do you ever imagine what would it be like if a prince showed up for you? Huh? It doesn't have to be a real prince. Even just someone like one. Is that something you dream about? Oh, no, um... I think I'm perhaps a little too old for that. 
You think so? Nelly still fantasizes about her prince. Uh, She's yeah, I was, I was about to say Nelly would beg to differ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> assumed all girls were the same. <laughs> Nelly, Lady Nelly's prince. That's you, Lord Mel, no? What? Is it not? I mean, we used to play make believe love with kids, but I heard her stuff. She still thinks of me that way in earnest. When she called me her prince now, it's mostly in jest. Means joke, right? Yeah. If it weren't, yeah. that would be concerning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that story. Do you know that it's a regional tale? One of them that's been passed down throughout the ages? I'm not sure. It could be very well. It could very well be of my father's own creation. Um, you might think of me conceited, but I think the story might be about me. The girl trapped in the mansion is you. You haven't been locked up anywhere before, have you? No, thankfully I've never been locked up before. Thank goodness. But with an appearance like mine, I can sympathize with her being afraid of the outside world. I have at times imagined how once I liked it. For only me and my father. And the girl left in the house at the end. But the girl left the house in the end. But if your father really wrote that story, then I believe it contains his hope for you to end up the same way. Oh. I don't have what it takes to be a real prince and whisk you away, but... I can at least pretend. So if it was your father's wish for you to see the outside world, there surely is nothing wrong with you getting out and experiencing all the scenery that the world has to offer. I want to see the outside too, or to be more specific, other countries. So, so, uh... So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, 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 uh He's like you, twisting his fingers, he's like twirling his fingers together right now. If you'd like, we... Maybe go see distant lands together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> ah, dear smell. You, you, have, you have to do like the annoying girl voice <laughs> for Nelly. Well, no, not that one. The other one. The... I can't even do it right now. You sick? No. Uh, I don't have water up with me. Uh, ah, wait, no, I can't do it. That was too, too deep. <laughs> you, yeah. Man, if Nelly just crashed in like that, if I had a sister like that, he'd just crash in when I was risen sound Nelly, up. I've been looking all over for you. <laughs> I would crash. I, I would crash out immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. N Nelly, look at this, dearest Mel. Mother brought me these wonderful gloves to wear on walks. The roses embroidered in the wrists are just precious. Oh my! Amazing. Right. They are beautiful. You appear to be dizzy, Lord Mel. Are you feeling unwell? No, I'm fine. Ha, uh, uh... <laughs> Mel. Bro. Mel. I, I would, I would, I would take the glints. I would start picking the glints on staffs off Nelly's hair if she came in like that. <laughs> yeah. in, in the anger. Mel was feeling feeling frustrated at his inability to compete. At his inability, I can't speak tonight. Mel was feeling frustrated at his inability to convey his feelings to her. Yes. And as his frustration built up over time, he developed, I suppose you could call it, a severe case of love sickness. For several uh -oh. consecutive nights, he had been afflicted with a peculiar sensation. A presence in his bedchamber. A creature of the night. No. Death. Ooh. Death to the unholy one. What? Death to the heretic. Death to the witch. What? Kill. Kill XXX. She's... Why, I've never wanted her to die. Was she not eating? Seal off the tower. Understood? No one finds out about this. How? How can you be so calm? Damn. Don't you understand what you've done? Ha, huh, pinning the blame on me. How nice it must be to be able to distort re distort reality with panic. You're just as guilty as any of us. Uh, I never wanted her to die. Strange implications, dude. Yeah, very strange. The witch killed especially, her. Especially the fact that Mel is dreaming this, you know? Yeah. The blood of the witch killed my, my dot 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 dot. He cursed. That must be what it is. <laughs> He said the F word or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. Grr. 
Ah. <laughs> <laughs> a dream? What was that dream? It was horribly unsettling. I was holding someone, a girl I cared for dearly, in my arms, and she was limp. It was almost as if she was dead. I've been having a lot of really unpleasant dreams lately. I can't stop. What does this mean? Why would I have such a dream? I feel sick. Back to sleep. But I wonder, who was that girl? Do you think it was um, because of the story the white girl told him that he had this dream? Or that maybe it means something else? It's definitely connected in some way to her story. Yeah. You there? Yeah, one sec. I can sense someone standing beyond my door. Someone there? It's like they were watching me. Is it just my imagination? I can't move. What? What do you want? Go away! He's having sleep paralysis right now. Yeah. Ah. I feel your bro. <laughs> the sound is growing fainter. Hi. Is that truly what your story meant, Father? But I. Such a magnificent garden. Something we could we could never have had. Are my intentions misguided? What a beautiful white rose. Uh oh. You know you can uh -oh. sneak into, the, into his room rather easily then. No one was watching. He's got me. She's got Miku hair right now. Yeah. <laughs> no one was watching. He 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 he. How long have you? Oh, you need pay me any mind. I shall not condemn you, no matter what you might do. Rather, I am on your side. I was not going to do anything. Oh, is that so? Then perhaps you're out for a late night stroll. I I imagine you have less difficulties going outside at night. I beg your pardon? I will return to the mansion immediately. Oh yes, that reminds me. It was also the middle of the night when the grocer's servant broke into their safe. News of that spread quite, quite far. I'm sure you would have heard about it. Oh? Although it was Gamash in prison, imprisoned? Interesting. Dear me, I'm having trouble remembering. But worry not, if you wish for it, the mansion shall provide. You are in no danger whatsoever of getting caught. I... I... You said that a wish lives in the mansion, did you not? It did. That's me, bro. That's me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to him. Does that sound perhaps <laughs> an archaic to you? No, I believe those rumors mockingly refer to me. Oh my. I have been accused of being a witch before, which is amusing. I don't have any magical powers. I simply have an unusual appearance. What? My, what a Ooh. lovely shade of red. The rose. Is something the matter? This rose. This rose was white until I took it in my hand. Yeah, is that so? I apologize. I must sound mad. What do you think happened? I don't know. I don't know, dude. Maybe she's a vampire or something. Yeah, but why would, that, why would it affect the rose? I don't know. Some strange connection between the mansion and its garden. I'm sure I was just mistaken. I couldn't possibly have changed. I wonder. Yes? Did the girl locked in the mansion become a princess? What? We should lock up and head to bed. Make sure all of the shutters are closed nice and tight, and then draw the bar on the front door. What? Uh oh. They're gonna slaughter everybody. I'm s Do you think, like, um, they, the white haired girl and the maid previously know each other? Or do you think this her? Of yeah. Slowly but surely, time trekked onward. Everyone working towards their own individual goals. Each early summer breeze in the blue field garden was like God's call of breath, carrying the flowers of fragrance through the rose manor's windows. Only time could be stopped in this beautiful era of to live on throughout eternity. As usual, Mel's eyes chased after the white haired girl, and Nelly pursued her lips in frustration. First, her lips. In frustration, as well. But she was still rather docile. 
taking into account how self-centered she behaved, how quickly her temper, Lily's fit, fits were still no worse than a paper kid. See, at that very moment, our lively little feline had her claws poised to swat at the flaxen hair of the farm. Hee 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 hee. Mel, you promised me, or have you forgotten? <laughs> Whoa. I, I haven't forgotten. I'm just thinking. I'm just asking if you can go another day. Another day? This isn't something that happens every day. I've been looking forward to tonight's performance for so long. There's nothing I can do about that. We're having a gathering at the priest's home tonight. Several high-ranking officials have come up from the mainland just for this. Who cares? I. I care. You know, Ellie. Nelly. It doesn't have to be me who goes with you. No. No, I want to go with you, Mel. You've been so distant lately. Dearest Mel. You refuse to do anything with me. <laughs> he gave up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Tell me, if you can't go today... When can you? When will you be willing to go out with me? When will you be willing to play cards with me and to have tea together? Stop. I don't make any promises. I have things to do. Obligations. And Nelly, you're almost an adult yourself. Stop acting like such a child. He's like four years away. I'm not an adult yet. I'm still a kid. If it means I don't get to play with you anymore, dear Smell, then I don't want to be an adult. Nelly, you can't. Lady Nelly, the master wishes to speak to you. Huh, father does? What could he want? G go on, Nelly. You, can you can't make father wait. He's very particular about people keeping their appointments. Yes, he is. Unlike you, dearest Mel. Die, die, die. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> so mean. What's got her in such a foul mood? First, though, I hasn't realized. Oh, well, thank goodness for small miracles. Nelly just wants him to take me at her word. Ah, like... uh, it's the nice, creepy woman. <laughs> so harsh on her. Also, it's strange how they both have very dull skin. Her and the white haired girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Strange. Anyway. Yeah. He mustn't be so harsh on her. She is her one and only darling little sister. You're right, but still, she's taking it a bit too far of late. Oh, I'm not so sure. She does not seem to be behaving any differently than me. Hmm. Am I the one acting differently then? Well, enough about that. Can I ask you a favor? Me? What can I do for you? I was thinking. Physically, Mel was undeniably a young man. The smirk that crossed his lips as the scheme began to his face the sweet look of a little boy. Or perhaps that was simply part of his charm. And it was not the age of disparity, but his character that made his smile so hard. What did he ask of me? You shall find out soon enough. Well, imagine telling someone, like, in this universe, what would be history, and, like, s like, making reveals happen, you know? Like, ah, oh, I'll tell you, tell you soon, let me, let me just recite word for word everything else first, you know? It's kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's cloudy. Thank goodness for that, too. Though it would be even better, or even darker. Um, I believe the textile shop was around here. Ah. Hi there. Lord Mel, uh, fancy meeting you here. Yeah, what a surprise. T la la. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. Um, what a coincidence, haha. Huh? Yeah. And then so... he gives it a light skin stare. <laughs> the flaxen haired stare. The flaxen haired stare, <laughs> dude. So, uh, what do you say we take this chance to go for a little walk? Since you're sensitive to the sunlight, we can keep our eyes out for shadowy areas as we go. If you feel unwell, just let me know. Uh, um, I was sent out to run an errand. Don't worry. She just said, like, I'll be your shadow. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Jeez. Or, 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 or she can just not talk, and then her, like, picture will be grayed out, so she won't, you know, she'll have the shadow there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry yeah. about that. Come on, follow me. Right, we're going a day with me. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It, uh, actually wasn't an accident. Cross paths. For real? I planned this out ahead of time. Has to have you sent out on a fake errand. Feels like I'm always on alert back at the mansion. Haha, uh -huh, can't relax in my own house. It's actually kind of funny. 
she's just like, this guy. Yeah, she's like, this sucks. <laughs> Sorry, that was inappropriate. I just thought since the sun's mostly blocked out, it'd be alright. Um, I'm probably just fine. Uh, or maybe her mind is full of, like, just how hungry she is to just suck him his blood right now. <laughs> yeah, of course, I get her out of the house and I can't even think of anything to say. Hey, uh, about. Yes. Have you settled into life with a mansion? I have. Everyone has been, been such a big help. That's good to hear. Indeed. So, uh. <laughs> Do you think that she realized that she, he likes her? Or. She's got like so much going on already that it's kind of like I don't know maybe 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 do you think that she likes him or uh, maybe a little bit I don't know yeah I can't even tell uh, and she yeah, might be a succubus she had you help redecorate her room sometime back yeah yes that was shortly after I arrived what of it yeah uh, that day Nelly told me that you don't. Um, I don't. Never mind, sorry, it's not important. It is uh, important, yeah. but I can just ask how she feels about me. No, it was like, um, she doesn't like you. <laughs> forget, sound like I do, don't I? Lord Mel? Oh, sorry, I had something in my mind. Looks like it might rain again today. Weather usually gets better as summer approaches, but not much like it has been. It won't be a heavy storm, though. No. The wind is too gentle. Tell from that. Vaguely, yes. Huh, that's impressive. I have to leave the house unprepared only to find myself sloshing back in the rain. Yeah. Tee hee. He. He. You he probably water. thinks he made progress now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna Slash. smile once. This is progress. Uh. You laugh a lot more than. <laughs> A smile suits Lady Nelly much more than I. What? A smile on your smile. Also, a smile suits you as well, Lord Mel. Ooh. Ooh. Do you really say? Do you really think so? What am I supposed to do? Face a smile like that. Smile back, you. Yeah, smile back, idiot. So, um, yes. Knowing her, if I ask if I'm imposing, she'll say no without hesitation. I'm trying to cover myself isn't going to get me out of anywhere. Hold on a second. I never did get you those flowers like I promised. There was a single white rose blooming in the garden. It turned red, bro. <laughs> I was planning to give it to you, but it disappeared before I had the chance. Oh, and yeah. It literally turned a different color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'd like you to have this. It's not a real rose, but it won't wilt either. I, I... I want the white one! <laughs> Mel was holding an ornamental white rose. It was an impressively detailed replica of a real thing crafted by an incredibly skilled artisan's hand. It was, I imagine, made by the same craftsman from whom Mel had ordered Nelly's birthday necklace. The young man, who, who but a handful of days earlier had said he had no sweetheart, had come in to commission a present for a girl. The master of the shop must have been quite surprised, or perhaps it had given him a good laugh instead. It was for this moment that he so desperately sought for time together with the white-haired girl. I don't know what you like, so I had to base it on my sister's tastes. M my apologies. I can't accept this. Is the design not too liking? N no, I just... If you're concerned about how much I paid for it, don't be. I just want you to have it, that's all. Please. Please. It doesn't have enough diamonds Please on it. Please take it. Please. <laughs> Please take it. I spent so much money on this. I spent so much money. Why are you so kind? Why? Because I'm sorry. I can't accept it. A clear glint of flustered panic was visible in her red eyes. There is not a girl in the world whose heart would not flutter at the sign of, spa of the sparkling rose accessory. What do you think is going on? Uh, well, let's see. But her reaction yeah. is far from delight. As a matter of fact, there were traces of fear and apprehension in her countenance. I, I beg your pardon? 
Hold on! He's like screaming. Hold yeah. on! With a look of distress on her face, the white-haired girl made to run off. But Mel grabbed her by the arm in the nick of time. What? Do not touch me. At least tell me why. Is it because you dislike me? I never said. I'm... Something's wrong with me. From the day you arrived at the mansion, it's like I haven't been myself. I've been strangely a flutter ever since then. Whether I try to study or whether I try to read, none of it sticks. I'm just looking at pages of texts, tracing rows of letters only for them to just disappear as soon as I look away. <laughs> it's all its all because of you. I... I truly, truly am sorry. Please, don't be any more gener generous than you already have. When I'm with you, my willpower wavers. What, what do you mean by that? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Dramatic frame. That's a... Mel's grip loosened for a moment, allowing her to slip free and dart off like a gust of wind, not giving him a chance to stop her a second time. The dumbfounded flaxen-haired boy stood frozen in place, left all by himself. The breeze which the white-haired girl had called gentle earlier, felt faintly chilly. Almost that Whoever moves first is gay. Huh? Whoever moves first is gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's stuck in his position. Yeah. Maybe you got something in your nose. Yeah. English or Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like she's even less fond of me than I thought. No, no, I think it's a deeper... Deeper implication. Yeah. I'm crying. I'm pathetic. The priest. Well, if it isn't Mel, what might you be? It's already confirmed magic exists in this world because noise? the priest is currently invisible. Huh? Dude, I'm getting angry. Okay. What do you mean? I'm getting I'm massive what? feedback on the mic right now. Actually, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Dude. Wait, still? Yeah. Oh crap! One second. Do you hear anything I just said? No. Okay, is it gone? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, 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 what I was saying was, um, I think magic is like confirmed in this story at this point because the priest is currently invisible. He's wearing like a, a visible cloak or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah ha ha. I'm so pitiful. Sorry, yeah. Blood thinks he's Shinji. Think nothing of it. I passed by a girl just a few moments ago. She appeared to be rather distressed as well. Did something happened between the two of you? I wasn't good enough, it seems. Not good enough? That was the new maid I was telling you about before. I was, um, like you said, Father, I was keen on her. Quite. Enough to bring me to tears like a miserable child. But she rejected me. I don't even have what it takes to, to be a stand-in, Prince. Mel, I apologize for complaining to you about this. I'm completely hopeless. Mel. Please don't try to cheer me up. I don't need any sympathy, I just... No, Mel, listen to me. What? I've seen that girl before. What do you mean? What? 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 Hmm. You said she was a servant at your house, right? In which case, she's an assassin. Yes, she is. Please tell me. Where did you see her? Why must you be so evasive? It was probably someone else. Someone else? You're saying someone you else with white hair, hair, white skin, red eyes? father. She and a man, whom I assume is his father, paid a visit to the church once. They came asking for food, their clothes in tatters. The two were emaciated. I don't think they were eating daily. What? Wait, wait a minute. Are you saying? She's a beggar. Her father said she came from an esteemed house, which is why I said I might be mistaken now. She has a singular aspect, but it is possible there's another girl who looks similar. Deep down, though, the priest surely believed the opposite. And so he said sternly, like a teacher to a pupil, But you must be absolutely certain now, understood? You cannot proceed any further without knowing her ancestry. But what if I don't care? Yeah. 
May I visit the church, Father? By all means. In the back of Mel's mind, a vision of the night of a storm. The night the white-haired girl arrived at the mansion was surely replaying. She had been wearing little more than rags than, and covered in grime, hardly the appearance of a respectable young lady of class. You remember that beggar at the church? Maybe it's her dad. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Or maybe it was her talking in a very low voice. <laughs> I've been putting through her through unnecessary stress. She actually turns out to be nameless, to be rankless. No matter where she comes from, my heart is decided. I will not fool myself about how I feel any longer. No, I cannot fool myself. But how does she feel? What will everyone else think? I have to find out why she's welcome to our house. I'll ask mother or father. You know? Yeah. I, if for some reason they don't know she is an aristocratic, I'm better not, not saying anything. But if they don't, then does that mean she's been lying to us and to them? I have to find out. This time, I must get answers. How's he going to do that, though? No, absolutely not. You come back and the first thing you say is that? I hate you, father. I will not stand for this. I will not stand for this! <laughs> you just realize this, Nelly? Yeah. Uh, why? Why would he just suddenly throw that on me? He didn't even ask for my opinion. Oh, new frame. No, I yeah. won't do it. I'm fine the way things are. I'm just fine. Maybe she's moving. Yeah. Uh, her dad's all like, um, you're really, really, really annoying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, what if they're marrying her off to somebody else? Oh, yeah. What if they're doing that? that then, then she won't be able to play a Mel anymore. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't. I don't. Want to get married. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I don't want to get married. Just found out um, women back in the day got married off for political reasons. 6-5, by the way. That's so sad. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> seems sudden, but I must confess that I made a great mistake. My transgression is that I was unable to completely predict where this path we were traveling led. My hands were full of dealing with my immediate day-to-day -day tasks. But, uh, I could do not but pray these were, there, were, there was happiness waiting in the future. Happiness for everyone who lived within Rose Manor. So maybe she's a benevolent force. Who? Mm -hmm. The maid? Yeah. What if she wait, wait. Scroll, scroll back up. I missed that text. I looked away. Uh, um, my discretion is that I was unable to completely predict where this path we were traveling led. My hands were full dealing with my immediate day to day tasks, so I will, could not but pray there was happiness waiting in the future. Ah, uh, yeah. Rose Manor, but I'm a mere maid. Yeah. Okay, if you assume, if you assume that the maid is actually speaking her mind, then that makes her seem either gray or good, you know? Hmm. Furthermore, it was a cool place. Go ahead. Huh? What were you saying? Oh, I was just saying... Um, never mind. Just keep oh going. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> what happened? I'll just I'll, I'll send you it in a second. Oh. Roads such as the one we're following have a way of diverging with little warning. And if you do not return the wheel, turn the wheel exactly right at those sudden forks, you may end up somewhere horribly off course. I was well aware of that fact, which is why I thought what I did was for the best. It's happening again. I made sure the door was closed, but I can sense someone standing there. Someone watching me. Footsteps. They're looking down at me? I want to open my eyes, but I can't do it. Purses. Just do it! Just do it! Just do it! You're just gonna leave without doing anything, are you? Yeah, dude. It's like whenever you think there's a ghost in your house, you have to look their direction, like stare to show you the alpha, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless That's what you should sleep do. sleep paralysis, otherwise you're gonna see something freaky. You just have to mog the sleep paralysis <laughs> demon and scare it away. Yeah. Straight up, though. Free me from this torture. No, tonight they're... They're on my bed now, looking down on me. Open your eye. My neck! <clears throat> Here we go. Uh what? Here we go. I can't speak. I can't move. <laughs> Bro. Bro. These cold fingers. That soft breath. What? It's her, dude. It's the maid. Why? I can't move my body. That's not important right now. I can move my body. 
Oh. Whoa. Uh oh. You smell of roses. The scent of a world far removed from ours. He made the gas with the sight before him, only to realize he could not. The pressure of her cold finger fingertips wrapped around his throat robbed him of almost entirely of the ability to breathe. Why? He silently mouthed the word for that moment, at least. Her melancholic, ruby eyes were focused wholly on the flaxen-haired young man. In them glowed a flaint, faint flicker of willpower and a continu continuously burning agitation that aroused her to action. I told you to stop being so kind to me. Why? It will all be over soon. Please don't make any noise. Assassin! Why? To put, to put an end to this family. You are my only... Why? Are you shaking? What? Upon hearing Mel's words, the strength drained from her slender fingers. He had not been questioning why she would do such a thing. There was, of course, a trace of bewilderment visible in his, in his eyes, but he did not shout, nor did he tremble in fear. He instead expressed concern for the young woman, who looked like a cornered rabbit. Uh, I am not shaking. You are, I can see it. As he slowly regained his breath, Mel's voice, too, grew clearer. Conversely, the red-haired, the red-eyed girl grew. The red-eyed girls grew progressively more faint and raspy. You are not doing this because you genuinely want to, for some other reason. This is what I desire. Have you been to my room before? You have. I'm sorry. Aha. Well, I'll be damned. Tell me, why are you shaking? You're not putting any pressure on my neck. Why haven't you run? Because I cannot fathom why you would do this, so I'm not afraid. You hate me so deeply you want me dead? You despise me to the point you would be willing to take my life with your own hands? No, no, I don't. See, like I said, there's another reason. If it isn't because you detest me, then tell me, why is it? I am sorry. I will leave your room now. I will do my best not to bother you any further, so please forget anything ever happened. Do you think I'm just going to say okay and let you go? Why can't you tell me the reason? I'm sorry. Alright then, I'll try and guess. What? It has something to do with your lineage. You're troubled, it by it. You're troubled by it somehow, am I right? I thought so. How, how do you know about that? The priest of the church told me he had seen you before. He also told me um, a little bit about your origin. That's all I know. The only difference between us is social rank. I don't know what would cause you to do this. Please tell me who you really are. Tell me why you came to the mansion. And why father allowed you to be a maid. I haven't said anything to mother or father. If you're hiding the truth from them, they still don't know. But I want to. I I won't get mad at you or have you punished. I'll, I'll even swear to God if you'd like. I I want to be the prince who whisks you away. I want to be like the prince who rescued the girl from the dark mansion and showed her the world. I know I'm not that dependable, but I want to help you. Why do you show me such compassion? Why do you treat me like this? I have my hand around your neck. Why? I thought it would be obvious. Or have I not expressed myself well enough? I... I love you. Every time you push away, it crushes me. I didn't even know my heart could feel such distress. If you dislike me and don't want to be with me, then well, I'll just have to live with that. As much as may, it may hurt. But if you have some other reason, some weight on your shoulders that you can't share with anyone else, tell me. I want to help you. There are other options. Things we can do about your... No, that's not it. Huh? I, I've tried to hate you so many times. So yes, there's more to it than just social status. But I can't do it. I couldn't make myself do it. What do you mean? I have had, I had so many chances, but I couldn't do anything. She spoke in a stifled voice as if every word had to fight to escape her lips. She appeared, appeared so fragile, so precarious looking down on him that it seemed as though if a gust of wind were to whisk through the, roar, the room, it would blow her away completely. Her pale fingers were trembling, like she had tried to squeeze them again and failed. However, her hand did not pull away from his still slender neck. Her hand is so cold. He did not challenge her, but simply kept his eyes fixed on hers, as if carefully watching to see what she would do next. I'll say it as many times as I must, I love you, and I wouldn't be able to accept losing you without knowing anything. But please, tell me the reason. I'll see to it that you're taken care of. Those are the words of a man of means, uh, Lord Mel, of someone blessed enough to have pity for others. You are foolish, young man. You know nothing. 
the greatest yeah. of all is myself. If you agree to punish me, I will talk. Tell me. Her long white hair and his soft flax and hell flaxen hair touched for just the briefest of moments that appeared in the darkness as though they had fused together into one color. Brown. <laughs> yeah, because that's what would happen. <laughs> just kidding. The white Those are not primary colors. They will mix very poorly into brown. <laughs> <laughs> the white haired girl, having finally gathered the courage, began to slowly tell her tale. On the night of the storm, I paid a visit to Rose Manor, this mansion. My father and I were always on the move, traveling across the land by foot. So it was only recently that we heard rumors of Rose Manor. There are several reasons we couldn't stay in one place. First is my unusual appearance. People often find the color of my skin or eyes disconcerting. So after living in one place for long enough, unsettling rumors would begin to spread, forcing us to leave. Another reason was my father's line of work. He painted pictures for a living, but he had trouble finding a patron, so he had to work day to day. When he was no longer able to find work in a city, we would move. We were birds that migrated without a flock. When we arrived at this town, my, ma my father was exhausted and weak. That is when we learned of Rose Manor and the family who dwelled within it. Rose is the name my father could never forget. What? 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 Well, yeah, because it's it sees the guy at the church. Dude. Yeah. He was long ago a painter in service of Rhodes' family. But hold on, your father was an artist here? Yes. It was before I was born, so you probably don't remember Lord Mill. Remember that painting that Nelly wanted in her room? Yes. Yeah. Maybe her dad made that, and the white-haired girl was gushing over it. So you knew about us before you came here. For as long as I, I can remember, I've known the same roads. My father was chased from your house just because they didn't like something he painted. What? Having failed the Rhodes family, no one else would become this painter. Just as good reputation spreads, so too does a bad one. Branded once as a failure, no one will take you in ever again. Your no you nobles throw your parties and spread your gossip about this painter or that sculptor. Rose you tried to give me as an example of that. It was, it was certainly crafted with skill, but the jeweler is only known because some aristocrats spoke highly of him. My father's paintings were no less skillful. His was a talent that could not be easily imitated, but no one was willing to separate the art from the artist. The Rhodes family stole everything from my father, but even thrown out on the streets, his only skill, but yeah, his only skill was painting. That was all he could do to earn a living. What little money we had for food, he gave to me. He did anything he could to ensure my survival, even at the expense of his own well-being. My father passed away in this town. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me. Mel didn't give him enough fingers. money. Huh? Mel didn't give him enough donations of yeah. the church. Maybe you should save. Yeah, maybe I should. Excuse me. If I had a normal appearance, I'm sure life would have been much easier. He was always telling me how sorry he was for making life so hard, even though it's not his fault I look like this. I disdain the Rhodes family for putting us, no, for putting my father through such hardship. I imagine you were still living in decadence, acting as though nothing had ever happened. No, you wouldn't even care about the fate of one simple painter. Our lives meant nothing to you, and so I sought to bring misfortune upon you. And that's why you tried to kill me? In truth, I wanted to take the master's life, but your father spent so much time outside the mansion. And so, you're right. If they lost me, I would put my family in a very difficult position. That is the whole of my tale. You now know about my father and how I live, and how I feel about you. Having having told you of the blackness in my heart, I cannot go on living like this. It's changed. Please give me punishment. Why? Why would you have me put the one I love through any more misery? I I'm not fit for your affection. Not only because I am not aristocratic, but because I every time I spoke with you, I did so holding this darkness in my heart. Does that not unnerve you? In the end, it was my family's actions that caused you so much suffering. For that, your father was still alive, perhaps I could have done something. I'm sorry. Besides, you hesitated. You didn't actually kill me. What am I even to punish you for? 
As you said, you had countless opportunities, but you could not bring yourself to do it. Tell me, why couldn't you kill me? Because I... If it's because I've given you enough reason, you don't have even the slightest bit of interest in me. Nothing was as I envisioned it. What? I assume the residents of Rose Manor could, would be cold people who believe their wealth and rank mattered above all. But on the night of the storm, the mistress was the first one to extend her hand to me. I arrived at the mansion disguised as a beggar. Actually, disguise is not the right word, as many nights I only survived on the generosity of others. The mistress did not send me away when she saw me. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. So that was Mother's doing. I could scarcely believe she would invite a stranger into her home, that she would treat a stranger with such, with such compassion. I thought perhaps she knew who my father was, but I had never met any of you before, so she simply must be that kind-hearted a woman. <laughs> And the mistress continued to treat me with kindness, despite my disquieting, disquieting appearance and the darkness in my heart. In time, I began to grow less and less sure of myself. Was that was what I meant to do truly right? Were the things I felt truly justified? But it was certain a fact that my father was here, and that he had been chased out. So I decided I should take your life, and put an end to everything before I wavered any further. And then, and then, and then... <laughs> You were too kind to me. It's all your fault. Because you laugh with such affection. Because you give me smiles like that. Because you say the things you say. You. I, I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. Aha, I'm so happy to hear that. Despite uh, the unusual circumstances. Please don't say you want to leave. Don't ask me to punish you. I couldn't do anything for your father. But at least allow me to do something for the daughter he cared for so dearly. You are far too kind hearted. I'll be happier with you around. You can become a real aristocrat. Huh? There are families that would be willing to adopt you. Especially knowing you'd bring them, bring them ties to the Rhodes family in the near future. Are you saying, um... As long as you're okay with that, of course. I, I don't understand. How could you possibly say that? I have my hand around your neck even as we speak. It seems reasonable enough to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> I'm desperately looking for some way to not have to lose you. But, but I couldn't. I don't know of any etiquette or social customs. How could I? You can learn all of that. You're pretty and naturally graceful. You'll do just fine. Uh, um, you are such an aristocrat, Lord Mel. What? But the way you can come up with compliments so easily. O only for you. Nelly says my poetry has as much charm as a dissertation. I don't understand theater. It puts me to sleep. Hee <laughs> hee. You laugh, thank goodness. Ah, you're smiling, you don't have to stop. A smile on your face is a smile on mine. No matter how deep the darkness has taken root in your heart, it can always be removed. I believe people are capable of forging their own futures. What do you say we go to the theater sometime? I promise I won't sleep through it. At the private theater, we can get seats at the far end of the second floor, so we don't have to stand. But that's cool. where Nelly wanted to go with you. <laughs> There would be pretty lavish seats, and it would give you a chance to experience the noble life. But, please, don't be shy. I can have clothes prepared for you. I'll ask one of the maids who can keep a secret. Say, the one with black hair. She kind of scares me, though. Ha ha ha. Tee hee. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. How could you show such compassion for me? I tried to inflict harm upon you. Am I allowed to feel such joy? He's like, I'm kind of scared of the maid. And then the maid's like, watch her, him right now. <laughs> <laughs> for every day you suffer, writing down writing down every single word he says <laughs> for every day you suffer a day of happiness that's how it has to be so stand by my side you softly whispered the girl's name for several long moments her lips trembled in trepidation but in time she squeezed them together and made a smile he wrapped his arm around her unbelievably slender frail frame holding her tight in an affectionate embrace Mel approached me the next day, explained to me the course of events, and then asked me to dress her up more beautifully than any other noble girl, girl I have ever, I've ever seen, had ever been. She was already a very pretty girl, so even without much effort on my part, simply putting her in a dress, she radiated beauty. I was quite partial to her smile, so I agreed to help, thinking that if it would lead her to happiness, I could not ask for anything more. I never anticipated what would happen next, though. Perhaps my hopes were unreasonable after all. Ooh. So, a relationship blossomed 
relationship. Nice. Relationship bagged in the bag? In the bag. <laughs> yeah. Arthur. Oh my goodness. Oh what? my goodness. What? What's now, wrong? Now, Ellie, you love the theater, so don't look so cross. Oh, they're about to have an encounter now. Yeah. <laughs> like, you think so? Yeah, Nelly's gonna see- Oh, cause, cause they're both at the theater? Yeah, Nelly's gonna see uh, Mel with the white-haired girl. Yeah, what, what do you think's gonna happen? She's gonna freak out. Yeah. <laughs> she's gonna have a little freak out moment. It's, cra it's crazy how you're actually enjoying, like, just, you know, like, drama. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Nelly was out with a man other than her brother that evening from her side of the She was quite clearly in a foul mood. I will not I will not stand for this. That I should have to marry a man as disagreeable as Arthur. It's unthinkable. He's literally an aardvark. <laughs> <laughs> Why would my dad marry me to an aardvark? That's so crass. Yeah. Uh, the young men are decided was Nelly's fiance selected by her parents. They chose the worst one. And if yeah. on any other vacation, she would have snubbed an invitation from any man who was not male. She had little say in this matter. She was, for lack of a better word, forced to go out. Then, oh, how furiously she had fought against them. She had shoved aside the Abigail and trying to pass her corset. Locked up herself in her room and sobbed for quite some time. It required the combined efforts of several of us to get her ready and out the door for her day. Come now, you can lose pretend you're enjoying yourself. Or do you want people to think we don't get along? Yes, yes, yes. See, we get along. Is Arthur uh, dense or something? <laughs> well, I want to be sure. What's it worth to you is my name, not me. Are you really going to be like that? I went out of my way to take you to your favorite play. The least you could do is be a little kinder. Than what was it called again? Romeo and Juliet? It's been running for six or seven years now. Family like yours or mine could pay to have a brand new script written. So why should we have to see an old play in a theater full of commoners? What the freak? What? It may be private, but even so, ha. Huh, I would rather just have a show put on at my estate. Stop. Stop talking already. Bro, if the white haired girl went to Arthur's house, she would have slaughtered everyone there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Blood dripping across the house. Yeah. Why should I? Why should I have to marry someone like you? I have absolutely no desire to marry you. Whatever it takes, I will put a stop to this. I'll talk to father as many times as I possibly Please don't make such a scene! Oh my goodness. It's shameful. <laughs> Wrong voice. Yeah, there are people around. Remember, remember you represent your family. What a, what a poopy head. What? what? What's wrong? What's wrong with Arthur? He's like trying. He's like contr he's like controlling her, dude. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wait. How old do you think was was his age even said? How old do you think he'd be? She's like fourteen, so he's probably like eighteen or nineteen probably or something. Like Twenty-four. Oh yeah, he's probably he's probably like thirty. <laughs> dude. It's yeah, you're right. I don't know. It's probably maybe in the story he's probably like the same age. Right? I mean, it's. I'm just giving. I'm just giving the story the benefit of the doubt. I mean, it's supposed to be politically accurate. I mean, uh, historically accurate, so there's gonna be stuff like that. Yeah. Besides, our families are hardly, hardly strangers to one another. Surprising mind, I thought we could be. No matter what you say, you can't break this deal. You don't. Your parents gave you too much freedom, and look what a spoiled little girl you became because of it. Goodness, you're gonna be quite the handful. Gave too much freedom is. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. Off, get off your high horse. No, you're the one on the high horse, Nailing. You're going to be my wife. You can at least put some effort into liking me. <laughs> Damn. Uh, uh, uh. What happens when I take you to a social engagement and you act like this? It's shameful. Shameful. Shameful to the both of us. This is coming from someone who used to call me Lady Nelly. What's your problem? What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> when you choose to act like a lady, I gladly call you that again. Goodness gracious. Put yourself in my shoes for a second. I have to marry a bratty little girl because it'll help my family. For real, Arthur, I agree with you. <laughs> For real, bro. <laughs> On baby. On baby, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you talk about me that way? You're not a damn princess. Open your eyes. If you think talking to your father will get out of this marriage. 
who wants to try. I doubt he'll have it though. Otherwise, you can just go complain about it to your friends. Oh, that's right. As far as I'm aware, you don't have any friends. Enough! As, as you wish. This is so frustrating. Why should I have to listen to this jerk mock me? Bro, why are you changing the accent, bro? I'm just, I'm just following you. And that's actually probably more accurate to yeah. where they are, because they're in England, so... Yeah. Please don't do a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> I have Mel. I know. My father wouldn't listen to bro. me. I'll ask Mel to talk to him. <laughs> Mel will be able to convince him. <laughs> uh, Come on now. Your favorite play is about to start. Maybe you should face forward. Yeah, it says face to the left. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts. You'll be fucking fucking down to me much longer. Throw him off the balcony. And then, yeah, he's gonna be, she's like, what? I can see Mel. Uh, is that? Wait, Nelly, get back here. What is that damn child's problem? Okay, since he's referring to her as a child, that probably means he's an adult. Right? Yeah, yeah straight up. Pedophile, pedophile, pedophile. I mean, yeah, but like at the same time, it's like normal back then. So, I mean, I'm not saying that's, that makes it okay. I'm just saying like... Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Historically accurate or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't give her permission to leave. Father will be sure to hear about this. I cannot having the roads making any more of a fool of me. Bro, you're the mean guy. Uh, um, I... Fine, don't be shy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but so many people are looking at me. She's so fashion fashionable. Yeah. Uh -huh. How old so is she? I wonder. I don't know. No, it's because I look strange. I assure you, that's not the case. Is it true you have an... It is true you have an unusual appearance. But right now, the unique color of your hair, your skin, and your eyes are also look And the dress. He just said that. Oh wait, he did. Wait, never mind. Oh my goodness. Oh my. You, you sound like a prince lord, man. What? Wow. So? They're an actual couple. Let's I go. Mean, I did say I'd be a stand-in prince for you. I think you're a wonderful prince, not just a stand-in. Wow. Which makes you my princess then. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, you're supposed to say yes, I am. Though. <laughs> you're gonna make me sad. Mm -hmm. They um, both got the awkward Riz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the autistic couple Riz. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll just have to keep working at it until you submit. What do you mean? What, what, what do you mean by that? Oh, hey, the plane's about to start. Um, what am I supposed to do? Nothing in particular. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, but there is one thing. Yes. If I start dozing up, you make me wake me up. I hope none of the characters in this are flat-footed, because they'd be standing the whole time. Mel, why are you? What are you doing here? Uh, I, I asked her to join me. It's nothing to get worked up over. It is. It absolutely is. How many times did I ask you to come with me and you wouldn't? You don't even like theater, dearest Mel, and you brought her. You're right. I'm not especially fond of plays, but I wanted her to be able to see one. Why are you making such a big deal out of this now? She's not suitable for you. What? She isn't good enough for you. Why would you choose her? She's creepy and you have no idea where she came from. Don't talk about her like that now. Also, I had a conversation about her last night, about everything. Yeah. You should just tell her that. But you don't even know who her family is. I do. What? Um, Lord Bell? You're lying for my sake? Yeah. It's fine. You just stay quiet. Like the other maid, she comes from a respectable house. I looked into it. However, circumstances prevent me from telling you what house that is. No, you're lying. That can't be. 
She's, but she's, she doesn't act like a lady. She lacks etiquette. She probably can't even dance. You expect me to believe someone like her is from a good house? Enough already, Nelly! Enough already! Yeah, he... He's pissed, bro. Mel yelled <laughs> at me. <laughs> it's, a, it's an Indian soap opera. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, it's like, it's like, you see me in their face, it's like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Yeah, like and it's like slow motion, and it's like black, and then it's like black and white, and it's like, and then it's like, um, like, uh, epilepsy for a second, and then like all this other stuff for five minutes, and then they get back to the talking or whatever. And then they show a black cat walk across the screen. Arthur, wait, where's Arthur? Is he just sitting there, like, staring at them, like, oh my gosh, what is she doing? Or something like that? She. Well, I'll let her. Yeah, she's like, she's like shocked. You have my word, you don't have to worry about her. So please, stay out of this nothing. It isn't any of your business if I spend time with her, is it? But, but dearest Mel. You need to stop hanging all over me, Nelly. Find someone for, wait. What are your, you doing in the theater? Are you here alone? Ah! Oh, yes, dearest Mel, about that. I have a favor to ask of you. Get me away from this lame. <laughs> yeah. I've been waiting to talk about you. Uh, waiting to talk to you about this since yesterday, but I haven't seen you at all. So, not Nelly, what is it? Father had me engaged without consulting me, and he picked Arthur, that disagreeable little jit. Little jit. Oh, right, that? I already know. What? I heard it from Father. That reminds me, he didn't show up at breakfast this morning. I see now. It was because of your engagement. Dearest Mel, is that who you're, you're here with today? In that case, you should get back to my brother and waste any more time with us. If you knew I didn't want to go. Excuse me. Hey, yo. <laughs> that was in lore. You knew I That's didn't not, want to get Yeah, married. in lore. <laughs> <laughs> you know I didn't want to get married now, Mel. The, the, so the, maid, the maid wrote that down. And she wrote down burp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you talk father out of it? Because it's your time, Nelly. There's someone else who'd rather be with him while you can be from your father. It's out of my hands at this point. <laughs> you're you're yeah. the only prince for me, dearest Mel. And the prince always grants his princess wishes. Doesn't he? I just want you to say you'll do that for me, dearest Mel. The Lady Nelly. Damn, damn. You stay out of this, you whore. I'm just kidding. It's all your fault. It's all because you showed up and played your little tricks on him. I warned you about this rat, dearest Mel. She's not suitable for I thought you had enough already! That's probably what he sounds like. Damn! Like, like, Damn. Damn! Damn. On the date, too, bro. Damn! <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah. How much longer? Crashing out. <laughs> yeah, how much longer are you going to continue to act acting like a child? I can deal with you being a spoiled little girl, but how dare you be de be so to rise up to someone else. M Mel, hit me. L oh. Lord Mel. Stay out of this. <laughs> Stay out of this. <laughs> Come on. This <laughs> 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 Go on, the show's about to start. People are getting stupid looks. Turn to your control. Now, I will follow this thing after this world. Dang. Damn, dude. Dude. It's getting real. Who do you, who's, whose side are you on? Left Me. or right? <laughs> uh. I just hope things turn out for the best for everybody. Except Arthur. Really? Except Arthur. What's wrong with him? He's, He's just Mr. Kimura, but less crazy. <laughs> he hit his sister. He hit his sister. Yeah, he slapped his sister. Yeah. You said... Uh, you said you would always be on my side. That you would always be my prince. The time for make believe is past. No, I refuse to believe it. I will not have it. What do you think is going through the white hair girl's head, <sighs> head right now? Yeah, uh, probably, probably, like, sad about the situation. She probably just doesn't want this sort of thing. Do you think she, like, blames Mel, or do you think she... 
something else. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe he was being too crazy. Do you, do you think he's being too crazy? I, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I kind of. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Slapping her in public is kind of crazy, but like at the same time, like she's imagine going like your whole life with someone who repeats the same thing all the time, you know, and then and and and, and being calm and humble about it all the time, and then she sees you on a date with someone and she freaks out. Yeah, I mean, still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't slap though. That's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit too far. Yeah, my goodness, that girl. Are you not going to go after her, Lord? No. no, just let her go. The only place she even has to go is home. I just wish she'd start acting a little more like an adult at 14 years old. I imagine Lady Natalie is simply... Hmm? She what? She what? <laughs> you really... You, you, re, you really handled that very well, Mel. You should go and slap her again. <laughs> <laughs> Beat her. Yeah. Yeah, like, she, she, she doesn't want to, like, like mess with me in that way. You don't yeah. play yourself. It's not your fault we had a But you two are so close. Well, yeah, we're siblings. We're so close, but nothing more. I do care about Nellie, and I enjoy spend, spending time with her, but she's my sister. Nothing more. Anyway, sorry for making such a scene. No, I, I imagine she left her patrol behind without saying anything, so I'm going to go apologize to them. You were so Sigma right there. there. <laughs> Stay here, I'll be right back. <laughs> Very well. Arthur's just sitting right there like, damn bro. I'm here by myself. Uh oh. Oh. I apologize for the abrupt question that I start only. What do I think? Yes, I did well was also truly happy with as well had anticipated Nelly flooded her career and that's a good Do you agree with the mid? Stopped outside. Probably one called for a different, different moment and ordered it to take her home. Belle's assumption was correct that the only place she had to return to was the mansion. The sun was beginning to set, and as a young lady, she could not simply go wandering through town alone, nor did she have any acquaintances to take her in. Her world was, in essence, composed of two elements, her brother and the Rose Garden. They were the light of her life at Rose Manor. She what about Arthur? Isolated existence. Ha. Ah. <laughs> Bro, I, I can't believe you're mocking her. <laughs> <laughs> when she escaped back home, Nellie went straight to her room, locked the door, and began sobbing. The waves of her sorrow came crashing effortlessly over the leaves. Tears streamed through the cracked walls of the dams blocking her tear ducts. What? What? <laughs> Why? Why? Why won't you help me now? Why won't you take my side? The decor in her room appeared blurry through her damp eyes. Memories of the day she had a redecorated played back in her mind with crystal clarity. She told me she had no feelings for you. That liar! That liar! She let her emotions run wild, breaking glass craftworks, silver plates designed by famous foreign artisans, flower vases, all sorts of things. It was as though a beast had been set loose in her bedchamber. The vase she tossed she got that dog out, in her. Painting against the wall, spraying water, porcelain and roses in every direction. It was the portrait she adored so dearly of her and her brother. Ah. And what, she, what appeared to her like a metaphor for her life, the frame fell off its mounting and came crashing to the floor. <laughs> wow! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> Nelly, I mean, if you think about it, like, she's been kind of just locked up kind of in the mansion, you know? Because of her state of mind of wanting to be with Mel, but him not wanting to be with her, you know? Stuff like that. Yeah. Like, wanting to play with him and stuff. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? Well, she just has this, like, yeah, she, I mean, she really is, she just needs to grow up a little bit, but she's 14 still, but still, it's like, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. The two smiling children were still the very image of happiness, inseparable siblings gently holding each other with another, one another's hand. My prince is no more. Though in her present state of mind, that image of happiness brought her nothing but misery. And the more she felt, the more frustrated she grew at the smiling girl and kind boy of her past. Princess is no more either. You're not a princess anymore, Nellie. 
some other woman has taken your place. I trusted you, Mel. I believed you would always be there for me. This painting is nothing but a lie. That's not the real Mel. That's not the real me. It's all a big fat lie. Do you think she genuinely believed that they're both like perfect siblings? Maybe. That's what it seems like. Yeah. She's crashing out so hard right now. <laughs> I wish this painting never existed. That it was never made. That I never had a brother. This painting. This painting. Ah. In a fit of emotional distress, she scratched feverishly at the painting she once considered precious. She put more force into her fingers than she or perhaps anyone imagined she could. Flakes of paint being, began falling off the canvas, and any time she noticed something peculiar. Huh? What? What is this writing? Something hidden beneath the paint? A little more. A date? Why would that be hidden? What could it be for? Completed. Watermark. But yeah, like... Yeah, Getty, Getty photos. 1587. <laughs> 1587. Sherwood allowed the faded, scratched-up handwriting. After staring blankly at the text for some time, the color in her face began to drain. What is this? How? How could this have been painted 16 years ago? Uh-oh, she's only Good 14. question. Good question. Yeah. I wasn't even born yet then, and Mel would have just been a baby. Is this not me? Is this not Mel? There was still more writing. Urged on by a rapidly pounding heart, Nelly furiously scratched away at the painting. Even as her clean pink fingernails were soiled with fragments of paint and blood, she did not stop. She was so overwhelmed by the trepidation that she could not stop. She had a horrible premonition that something was about to happen. Something indescribable. Incomprehensible. Th this is how I envision your son and our unborn daughter might look. Several years from now. What? what? Uh, the reveal. The reveal. They're not siblings. I called it. I'm just kidding. But that was, that, well, I like... I remember like, when we first read, I was like, maybe, maybe the, the subplot is a, uh, like... Oh, whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I, I was, I was toying around with, I wasn't, like, dead set on that being the case, but... Yeah. yeah I mean, I considered it, I guess. Alright. Your son and our unborn daughter. So this was a painting of the future? Then it really is of me and Mel. No, use your head, stupid. Stupid! I'm only stupid. 14. Sixteen years ago, I would not even been inside, Mother. But then... Then who is this? Who is that holding Mel's hand? Who is that with my brother? More... What if... What? what? This is strange. More. What? What if... What if the white-haired girl is his actual sister? And what if she is the un... Like, just... You know, a different woman. Yeah. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Alright. That would be... That would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> More, more, there has to be. Uh, ow! Found it. There's more writing. I have to know what this is. Calm down. Calm down, Nelly. It's nothing to get worked up over. I'm sure it's nothing. Oops. Calm down and read. There's nothing to worry about. If our onboard child... This is what the writing on the painting said. All right, yeah, give me the full text. If our unborn child does not have your hair, hair, your hair color... Then you will probably not be able to take her in as your own. I will be punished and my life made miserable. Dude! Dude! What? It's all coming together. And so I pray that this child might have flaxen hair. Bro! 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 Yeah, it's getting crazy. Though is it, it is a sin to wish she has in her a trace of me. Is it a sin? I do hope it is a girl. What? What? What are you thinking? What am I? You're reading? like a guest. You're like a guest right now. <laughs> I'm a guest. I am. I'm dumbfounded and and gobsmacked. Flabbergasted. Yeah. Completely gobsmacked. 
Yeah. Not really. Um, what? So obviously, this dude, or maybe most likely, this dude is the painter. Yeah. And the daughter is the one with the hair color that is white. Most likely. Yeah. Or maybe. Or it's something else. Or maybe. maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm. It's very interesting, but it confirms yeah. that they're not siblings. Yeah. I don't get. Or it. maybe they are. Who knows? Could have a kid later, you know. Someone tell me, what does this mean? Painting from 16 years ago. Hair color. Sin. I do hope it is a, it is a girl. Oh, I know. The twist is that Nelly is actually a boy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so <laughs> and stupid, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that would be dumb, bro. If Adam Morgano was made in 2024 in America. That's what the twist would be. Uh, never mind. Okay. Yes? It's Nelly. Let me in. Lady Nelly. Oh, you changed out of your dress. That's a shame, but it looked nice on you. It really did look so nice. Almost like you were a princess. Um, Lady Nelly? <laughs> She's like, uh, you good? Yeah. Say, you good, bro? I've got a question for you. Do you mind? By all means. What color hair did your father have? I beg your pardon? You do not hear me? Should I repeat the question? N no. I assumed it would be about Lord Mel. I'm just so curious about where you got that white color from. Uh, I... My father was more tan than white. So I didn't inherit my paleness from anyone. I asked about your father's hair color. Wh why would you want to... There's no reason you can't tell me, is there? My father, um, had white hair. That was simply because he was an older man. I do not think he was born with... Ha... Ha ha... L Lady Nelly? Ha ha... Ha 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 Yeah, she's freaking out, dude. She's having a freak out, dude. Hey, yeah. guess what? I figured out. I figured it all out. And it was so simple. There's only one difference between you and me. The thing that Mel fell for is... Whoa! Why do you have those uh -oh. scissors? No, stay back. Dude. Is she gonna murder her? Uh, wow. you, you should you should save. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. The painter's curse. No. Uh, we have finally reached this point in the tale, Master. If your memory has been refreshed, then we can return to the mansion immediately. Very well then. If you insist, Master, we shall proceed with the story. No, please, getting that interested. Like, no, yeah, that, like, that was like the narrator saying, hey, you should save the game. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it was a stormy night, much like the one that white-haired girl had first arrived on. It was quiet as a crypt in the mansion, not a single light visible in the halls. The house sat in wait for the sun to peek out over the horizon. The darkness is, generally speaking, something that rushes by like a gust of wind as we sleep. That flaxen-haired young man, too, lay in bed. Pale blue moonlights were ineptly streaming through the gaps in his drawn velvet curtains as he attempted to submit to slumber. That's a cool sentence. He was having difficulty drifting off, as, but as time trickled onward, he drew closer and closer to the arms of Morpheus. What? Prez is... He's in the Matrix. He's in the Matrix. <laughs> yeah. Morpheus. You, you, do you know Morpheus? Morbius? Uh, Morb? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna morb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna morb. No, it's uh, the god of sleep. Dude. Yeah. Suddenly, he sensed a presence in the room, much like the one from those nights some weeks earlier, except it's Nelly this time. Is someone there? Answer me. A slender feminine finger pressed gently against his lips. There was no hostility in the motion, but rather a great deal of affection. You're. Oh. Flash of lightning shone through the drawn curtains, illuminating her beautiful white hair. Okay, it's her. All right, come on. Several, several. Oh. Oh. What? Oh. No. Oh no, dude. What? Oh no. What? What? Dude, <laughs> what? She cut off her hair and put it on her head, dude. You think so? Well, let's see, dude. <laughs> Several silky, silky locks spilled over her shoulders and brushed against Mel's cheeks. 
I got saliva in my mouth. <clears throat> a couple of soft puffs of her hair trickled his face as though she were silently laughing. He assumed her finger, held against his lips, was her way of telling him to stay quiet. She began to slowly, delicately trace the outline of his mouth, moving down his cheek and along his jawline, as if over porcelain. You're, uh, rather the, more forward than I remember. Well, I suppose you were always quite daring. This isn't the first time you sn sneaked into my bedchamber. The boy said in an attempt to conceal his surprise. Do you remember the night she came to exact revenge on him from her father? Indeed, she had proven herself to be a rather bold girl once already. <laughs> it's dark, I can't see you very well. Why don't I light a lamp, or perhaps we could open the... Before he could finish, the white-haired girl sealed his lips with her own. In the near total darkness of his bedchamber, the two shadows appeared as one. They remained that way for several minutes. Her kiss was innocent, no, no more than the pressing together of two pairs of lips. And at the same time, the white-haired girl lovingly ran her fingertips across his skin. When their lips separated, Mel gasped for air. It seemed he had been holding his breath. Slightly embarrassed at himself, he said, What the f- Bro! Bro! Yeah. Bro! That's crazy, dude. Yeah. She went, she lost the plot, dude. Yeah. Dude. Nothing. He could not speak. The silhouette hanging above him was certainly the white-haired girl's. Or was it? Because his next words were, Get, get off me! He reflexively shoved the girl, straddling him aside. She rolled off the bed, landing on the cold floor, but slowly, gradually, she crawled her way back toward him. That wasn't very nice. This is getting wild! <laughs> Failed in darkness, she slowly lifted her head, and then there was another flash of lightning, and he the heavy fabric of the curtains rustled, bolts of light streaming between the gaps. Her flaxen irises glimmered, though in the bluish white light, they took on a twinge of almost golden glow. No need to be so rough. This isn't the first time she's visited your bedchamber. Is it now? Or did I not kiss you the same way? Tell me, how does she run her fingers across your skin? What does she do when she nuzzles up to you? S stop, stop this madness, Nelly. Why, why would you, why would you do this? Because you like white hair, don't you, Mel? You, you like white hair, which is why you fell for her, isn't it? So if I have white hair, then you'll fall for me too. Then I can be, your, uh, then I can be your princess again. What, what are you even talking about? He could not escape from her, from her sister, from his sister's piercing gaze. Why? What happened? How could she? Questions crashing through the young man's mind like waves in a storm of sea. But none of them found answers. They simply caused him further complexity. Y your hair. What happened to your hair? How did you get it that color? Oh, this? Bro. Uh oh. My wig? Dude! She scalped her, bro. Yeah. She scalped her, dude. Fourteen-year-old <laughs> Nelly scalped her, bro. Yeah. That's crazy. But as soon as the words left her mouth, Mel was in motion, propelled by pure instinct. He clenched Nelly's shoulder, just tight enough to dig in his fingers into her flesh. You're hurting me, Mel. What, what did you do to her? Tell me, what did you do? I made her leave. It was a perfectly reasonable decision. She was obviously not an ability, and thus hardly fit to be a part of this household. There was no need to worry about her. I'm here to take her place. You sound like a mad woman. It doesn't matter if she was in her blood or not. She promised she would stay by my side. So why? How could you do that to her? I promised you that long before she ever did. And I love you far more than she did now. Have you lost your mind? You're not making any sense. Where is she now? What is she doing? It's always her with you. What more do you want from me? Tell me, what does she have that I don't? What do I have to get you to focus on me and only me? We're siblings. Don't you understand what you're doing? Oh, I understand it quite well. <laughs> far, excuse me. Far better than you did, dearest, <laughs> dearest Mel. It, even know that a former queen was executed for it. But... If we don't get caught, there's no problem. Nelly, you... Are you saying you've always felt this way about me? Oh my, you didn't notice, dearest Mel? You truly are a dense one. I guess romance just isn't your strong suit. But you've noticed now, haven't you? 
You know exactly how I feel about you, right? Quit it. Enough. Don't say anything else. Stop. Stop having these insane feelings for me. It's disgusting. What are you laughing about? Poor, poor Mel, content in your complete ignorance. Alright, I'll tell you everything. Mel, you... Only love blood-related women. What? <clears throat> what? 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 How did she gather that? Huh? huh? His cackling sister appeared to him like some kind of inhuman life form. Her actions and incomprehensible exclamations slowly drained him of his strength. What kind of deranged nonsense is that? <laughs> I love her. She's your sister, Mel. What? Okay, so I guess I was right. Haha, uh -huh. very funny. How far have you, out of your mind have you gone, Nelly? Poor, poor, poor Mel. Do you honestly know nothing? Say that her father was a man. Painted pictures for him. What, what up? For a time, her father painted for our family. You've seen the pictures before, dearest Mel. One hand in my room with the two of us. That was painted by her father. He did a good job, didn't he? I kept asking and asking until you finally agreed to hold my hand. And how did you feel about that? You were rather embarrassed, weren't you? Do you remember that day, dearest Mel? You couldn't possibly remember it, but there's a chance you might remember this. Before we moved to this mansion, we had a painter with white hair. I, I don't remember any such thing. He was, long ago. A painter in service of the Rhodes family. But that painter did something very, very bad, and because of that, he couldn't remain a part of our household. Do you know what he did, huh? He lay with mother. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. My father was chased from your house. If the child had been born with flaxen hair, then the painter would not have been thrown out. The baby would have been accepted as part of the family, but that wasn't how it turned out. The child had white hair. She didn't look at all like she carried the Rhodes family blood. But see, mother had me. Haha. <laughs> That, I, that I'm here is all the proof you need. The girl born 16 years ago didn't have flaxen hair. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms and ran his hands through my hair and an apologetic look on his face. You're, you're talking total nonsense. What? What proof do you have? If you want to see it, I'll gladly show you. The artist left a message in the painting in my room. Tell me, am I truly wrong? What did that girl tell you? you? You're lying. What part of it is a lie, Mel? Everything I'm telling you is the truth. Why don't you go ask Mother? Haha, <laughs> I'm sure she would throw quite the fit. Mother would. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. It never made sense to me. Why would she hire a maid she knew nothing about? Somebody just showed up in the door one day. But when I asked Mother to make her my maid, she stubbornly refused. A good house? Don't make her laugh. If she were really a millionaire, she would have given us her name. Her mother was so desperate to cover up her mistake. Ha ha ha. That doesn't make any sense. I don't believe a word you're saying. It couldn't possibly be true. Wouldn't it be nice if you could bury your head in the sand? But Mel, feigning ignorance is a sin. No, I refuse to believe it. There's not a chance in hell. You just don't understand anything. How I feel, how much I've suffered. Do you have any idea how long I've loved you? Knowing that you could never accept, you would never upset, accept my affection. But but then fancy that you fell in love with your half sister. Then I should qualify for your love too, shouldn't I, Mel? Oh, freaky, freaky! Stop it! Enough! Shut your mouth! Not another word! I don't believe any of this. I know you'll never love me. I know there's nowhere for me to run. Say, when we were kids, was that really me? Was I really by your side, Mel? That painting tells the whole truth. I was never, never once did I get to be your princess. Not even once. Dearest Mel, everyone just loves to dote on me. They're always telling me how pretty I am. Mother does, father does, and all the maids do too. I can do anything I want. So for me, acting like a spoiled child is the only form of rebellion I have. I don't have the kind of freedom you do, Mel. I'm just a doll for the family to play with. When I have visitors, it's only ever for show. So it's not my fault that I don't have friends. Dearest Mel, 
you're the only one who's ever cared about me more than anything in the world. Dearest Mel, I always knew how I would react if you fell in love. I would cry my eyes out. I would envy her to death. I would get angry as a bull. But eventually I would have given up. I knew I could never have it my way, after all. My feelings would never bear fruit, so why did she have to be your sister? Tell me, why? Damn. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's crazy because she is his sister, and then he's like, isn't accepting her advances, and then he falls in love with his half-sister unknowingly. Yeah. Like, the irony in that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know? The only, per the only person she should go with. Yeah. Oh, dear, it's not here again. Reading such hard books. Your eyes and I think it's kind of... I think it's I think it's kind of Mel's fault too, because he never actually told Nelly to like, like he never realized how Nelly actually felt, so he can never actually tell her any you know why she shouldn't do that stuff. She yeah. he only ever like told her to stop or whatever you know. He never actually had a heart to heart because he never realized yeah. he's focused on other things. You know what I'm saying? That it was all just childish, like nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your eyes would go bad if you spent too long staring at pages. It'll, I'll be fine, Nelly. It's not like I'm reading 24 hours a day. No, that's not good enough. If your eyes go bad, dearest Mel, you won't be able to see me anymore. Ah, you worry too much. I can see you fine and well, my princess. Your hair glimmering like the sun with your beautiful smile. I can see you clear as day, and that'll never change. Plus, the skies are clear today, and so you're even more radiant than usual. You know, this is my favorite season. Oh, what, red? So much rain. I can't stand it. As it gets closer to my birthday, the clouds go away. I just adore the sun. Ah, uh, yes, it's almost your birthday, isn't it? Have you decided what you're going to ask Father for? Not uh, yet. I want pretty dolls and shoes with sparkling gems. And I also want a pretty dress, like the one Mother wears. Mother wears. Uh -huh, at least that, that, at least that long is asking me to admire you, Father. But the dearest now. Hmm. I already have what I want the most. Is, as long as I have that, I don't need anything else. Oh, and what would that be? The hairpin they bought for you the other day? Or maybe the song they had written for you last year? None of that, dearest Mel. Huh, then when could it then what could it be? Now I'm really curious. What is it that's so valuable to you? <clears throat> that's a secret. Girls have so many secrets, I just don't know what to do. Say, dearest Mel. Would you run your fingers through my hair? Just for a little bit? What's gotten into you, Nelly? Why are you so hungry for attention all of a sudden? Please, dearest Mel. She's kind of getting weird. Uh. Say, I'm um, dearest Mel. What is it this time, Nelly? Right now, I'm so incredibly... Happy. Oh, and out of curiosity, who was it that you really cared so much about? Ha, ha, ha. In a fever and frenzy, Mel fled from the mansion. Even in early summer, the night was cold, and to make matters worse, raindrops pelted him from head to toe. That caused him little discomfort, for a frog raider maelstrom of pain rampaged with the dust. At night, the town took on a different appearance, not simply for lack of illumination, but for people active within it as well. It was not a suitable place for a young aristocratic man to go wandering unattended. <clears throat> the darkness is not only the abode of devils, but of beggars, thieves, criminals, and all manner of things undesirable. Despite that, he continued to run, knowing not where he asked to head. He simply went there, went where his feet took him, and where he arrived was the tur was the church. Um, I can't hear you. I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And about that painting, about her, and about Nelly's feelings. Not her lies, but the truth. <clears throat> Please open the door. Open the door. But as you might expect, the door was locked, and the priest showed up no sign of responding to his calls. The sound of the pouring rain drowned out everything else. His head drooped feebly. He looked quite like a helpless little calf. 
who had wandered alone into a dark and precarious mountain path with no end in sight. <coughs> Dang. Why? Why won't anyone tell me the truth? All I want. All I want is for someone to tell me it's not true. Have I sinned? No, I didn't know anything. I didn't know. No, no, none of it's true. So I haven't done anything wrong. Am I, I am not at fault, am I? Nevertheless, his sister claimed and her laughs continued to echo within his head. If he truly believed it to be false, he would have gone to look at the painting. But he could not was an indication that uncertainty had been stronger. Fragmented images of a white-haired painter fluttered through the back of his mind, but he desperately shoved them aside. What good is the church? What good is theology? What good is God? Uh-oh, bro. Don't be saying that. Uh-oh. Don't be saying that, bro. Yeah, bro. What? Something was moved near the boy. It stood immediately behind him and grasped his light dressing gown. He had been so consumed in his own world that he had not noticed the person's presence until they were close enough to, to touch him. What? Who are you? Standing there was a beggar dressed in tattered rags. He's still begging at the church? Dude, he's gonna, he's gonna like... He's gonna like reject him, bro. Oh, I hope not, though. Bro. I hope he, I hope he, I hope he, I hope he gives him, gives him some money, dude. Yeah. Were he, were he a generous young man, Bell would have given the beggar something. Were he generous, of course. Lord, get your filthy hands off me, dude. Dude, what is dude. his problem? Dude. Dude. Why do you think Mel is acting like this? Dude, he messed up, man. He messed up. He messed up. Why? Why do you think? Why? Why just because like, he, he should? Because he should have. Uh, he should have just continued to be charitable, dude. Like I understand. Yeah. Him, like a freak, he's freaked out. But yeah. like, you know, this beggar has nothing to do with that. Maybe could be the father. Yeah. You know, get your filthy hands off! I don't have a the same to give you right now. Don't you dare touch me! Suddenly. But wouldn't that be his half father then? My eyes catch the beggars. Her hood felt like revealing a hairless head. What? Why? And a pair of red eyes glazed weirdly and before the people just took a flicker out of them. Red eyes. She immediately covered her face and turned around. It can't be. The beggar that's always been here was a. You said yourself that they would not survive this long. How could you be certain she was that same beggar? Ah, uh, wait, wait for me. Perhaps as someone of such a high social standing, all beggars appear the same as you. Perhaps you wanted to believe your meager generosity made a difference that you made today. You did something of value. I will not say it is wrong to think so. Wait for me. I chased after the clean girl. Though I shot for her to stop, she continues to run. The rain is so heavy, I'm afraid I might lose her. I'm terrified. But I didn't do anything wrong, did I? I'm begging you, please stop. I just want to talk. She comes to a stop at a corner. Please do not go around this corner. It, it's you, isn't it? I am sorry. Why are you apologizing? When I said back I was telling her that I'm truly sorry. I didn't realize it was you. Please come back to me. You're concerned about social status. I'll figure something out. But Nellie's getting married off soon enough. Oh yes, Nellie. Nellie did some horrible things to you. She's lost her mind. She was talking nonsense. Don't worry, she'll be out of the picture soon enough. I'll make sure you're safe. Say something, please. Are you angry? You're angry, aren't you? I'm not angry at you. I'm not... aware of everything. What? Did you tell me, please? The priest is around everything Nelly says is a lie. You're the only one who will tell me it's not true. What are you? Our relationship. I don't understand what you're saying. You don't know. You don't know. It's for the best. Nelly's the only one who knows, and she'll be gone before long. Everything will be alright. Lord, no. It'll all be alright. Let's go back. I'll make sure you're never put in danger again. Stay good with me. My appearance is no longer suitable to stand by your side. You saw how unsightly I am back by the church, did you not? Hair can grow back. That's not a problem. Now I truly look the part of the hideous witch. But I am to blame. It was a sin for me to have to find happiness in your kindness. What are you talking about? Your my sin was falling in love with you. Not what happened to my father. Nor how we had to spend our days. There's no sin in that. We have our whole lives ahead of us, don't we? With enough time, this whole tragic mess will be all behind us. Things will only get better from there. Uh, I'll be a prince, like the one that took the girl to see the outside world. So please, give me, give me your hand. Come to me. Don't leave me all alone. I need you by my side. Please, I extend my hand around the corner. 
my sensory hesitating me out the bed. I'm begging. I can't see what's on the other side, but a vision of her reaching out to her, put her hand in mine, wells up in my mind. But that story never had an ending. What? She doesn't take my hand. I doubt the girl ever, ever wrote that letter. She's not there when I turn the corner. Why? How did things end up like this? Where did I go wrong? The error was likely your kindness. Thoughtlessly, haphazardly spreading your generosity. But that generosity came from your own desire to avoid pain. Your own, for your own happiness. Where's she coming from, huh? Where's she coming from? What do you mean? <clears throat> what should I have done? I can't take this. Everyone, everyone is happy. Belly used to laugh and smile. She once meant the world to me. How did things end up like this? It's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. If you pretend like nothing happened, then perhaps they can go on smiling in your head. But regardless, you must follow the path you tread. It is your path alone. The path you chose when in that moment you decided to run. Make the wrong choice in those moments and you shall find yourself on a road to ruin. I would have been better off not knowing. Better off in the dark. I just wanted those tranquil days to last. They were supposed to last forever. At some point your childhood must come to an end. And that ending may not be the one you anticipated. I can't stand this world. You yearn for a world that would treat you with kindness. What should I do? What should I have done? Someone, please, help me. You should return now. If you spend too long out here, you are liable to catch a cold. But let us return to our own time. So she really was there at that time, which is kind of crazy. She was kind of monitoring the situation. Wait, no. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. What? She disappeared there. Strange indication there. What do you mean? Maybe that wasn't totally Ooh. real. <clears throat> the crestfallen young man had faded into the distance, and the decrepit double doors clacked shut. Through the shattered glass, you could only see the ruins of a garden, not a single rose growing within. You had evidently returned from the past. In the garden, weeds grew taller than people. You found it difficult to look at. A wolf howled in the distance. The children, the sea of roses, and a white-haired girl were nowhere to be found. You and the maid who called you master were the only people present in the mansion. What happened to them next? Oh, Master, you would know better than I. Um, no, I wouldn't, huh? <laughs> Mother, you cannot remember? It seems this is quite serious, then. Worry not, my loyalty lies with you, Master. The mansion has witnessed more yet. Let us make our way to the second door. Alright, hold on, hold on. What? You should save. Yeah, I'm gonna save. And I'm gonna call it. Alright. Since he finished the first door today... I think that's good progress. Yeah. So, what'd you think of the first door? Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. I kind of set everything up pretty nicely, though. Um, yeah. But it is pretty wild how it turned out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had a feeling that um, I had a feeling that Nelly was like not his actual sibling, and it was gonna create yeah. like, just like this romantic triangle almost, and she was gonna do something drastic. I didn't know yeah. it was going to be, like, scalping her or something like that. Well, I mean, she didn't actually scalp yeah. her, but still. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought she straight up just killed her. Yeah, that's what I thought initially when I first read it as well. Yeah, because uh, um, she just straight up was going to murder her. quote unquote wig to, you know, to just be like. Yeah. That. Just like, it's actually just crazy. Yeah. But, um, was Nelly justified? <laughs> uh,. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, she was not. Uh, yeah, she wasn't. Yeah, she was not. What do you think about Mel? Because he's like, he was kind of like um, a blank slate for a bit, I guess. Well, not really, but like, you know, he's just kind of like a normal guy. And then eventually he becomes a bit more, you know, uh, shows his temperament a bit more after yeah. he falls in love with the white-haired girl. Yeah, he kind of had a little bit of a moral failing there. Yeah, and then he doesn't want to help the beggar until he realizes that it's the white haired girl. Yeah, the, you know? the one time he he did he couldn't bring himself to help the beggar was it was his love all, all was, along. Yeah, yeah, when it was insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot actually happened in this in this in this yeah. door or in this chapter at least. 
Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm kind of excited to see what happens next because I don't, I don't yeah. know where we're gonna go. Where well, I don't know where we're gonna go because. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like? What do you think about the maid now? I think she's do you have any more, different opinions? I think she's definitely more of like a neutral, benevolent force because she's not like manipulating anything. Kind of. She's like. She she seems to be trying to do some things for the best of people in the mansion. What like um, telling the white haired girl that she would like bar the mansion closed so she can assassinate Mel. Didn't she say that? Because weren't they talking about that? Did the maid say, tell the white haired girl that she would like? Oh yeah. Like, lock all the doors. Yeah, well, what yeah. If, I don't know yeah. what's going on with that. I don't know what's going on with that. Like, I, don't, and, and, I can't ascertain the the motivations of the of the maid. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand what's going on with her. It, who do you do you still think that you are Mel, or do you think maybe you are someone else at this Mel. point? Yeah. Yeah. And what about like? Do you think there's any significance to that like story Ooh. that what? Could be. What if it's Nelly, dude? What if it's Nelly, bro? What? What if you are Nelly? Yeah, that would be crazy. What? 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 Get, what will give you that idea? Oh wait, is it well, be no? Well, like I don't know. It could. It could be any. Any of the three of them. Yeah. It could it be any it of the three of them. Because they're all related. They're all related to that family line. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Every single character that had a uh, image were blood related. And you yeah. only know that at the end of the first part. Yeah. So. Well, Except I, for the maid, I guess, or yeah. maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I do, don't do, know. You, do you still think the white-haired girl is a vampire after you know her lineage? Uh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You think her dad was also a vampire or something like that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He he was Alucard, bro. <laughs> yeah, he's <an> Alucard. <laughs> yeah. What if the guy with the hand in the title screen is actually just Alucard from Castlevania? <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop recording. Oh.